is it advisable, is it feasible to start a long distance relationship? Yeah, I think, why not? Did you push record? Thanks so much for tuning into our second act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Hey there, Silka. Hello, Paige. Uh, Paige, today a topic, interesting topic, uh, actually, I think, the idea of starting a long-distance relationship. Uh, it's come up a lot, well, for obvious reasons. One, you know, with, with the pandemic and how that's changed the whole world of dating. But also, uh, you know, as, as we get older, our dating pool shrinks, uh, you know, how far do you expand your potential and have that make sense? And s- some interesting questions came up, and I wanted to ask you about that. You know, what is it? advisable is it feasible to start a long distance relationship yeah i think why not yeah you know you have to think about some things behind that and like you said we don't know how long we're going to be in this pandemic we don't know when someone's going to be able to hop on a plane and meet a person or go down to a restaurant and meet a person without worrying about covid um so I never think there's anything wrong with starting a long distance relationship as long as you kind of know what you're getting into, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about some of the specifics. I think the first question you have to ask yourself is, you know, what do you need out of a relationship? Right? In the current moment, in the current time in your life. Because right now, it's really hard to meet people with the pandemic. Right now, maybe it's just two people who want a long distance relationship for comfort, for someone to talk to, for someone to connect with when you can't connect with other people or go out and connect as easily. So, yeah, why not? Yeah. Well, and then obviously there's a lot of articles and, you know, research Mm -hmm. about people who have maintained long distance relationships or Mm -hmm. maybe couples that were then thrown into a situation where they needed, you know, work wise, career, whatever, uh, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden were thrown into a long distance and all that has worked very well. It's a different set of circumstances when you meet when you don't know this person. That that that's I guess the scary part, and where you get into catfishing that term, the situations where this person isn't even real. So I guess I like I think I'm all for it. The more I read about it, I think it's terrific. I think you can start online, meet someone new, but what what might be you know some of the red flags. Well, it goes down to what you said first. You have to decide why you're doing it. And if this is going to work for you, try it. If you start doing it and you go, you know what, this doesn't work for me, and here's the reasons why, then you know this doesn't work for you. So red red flags, there can be a lot of red flags. So you don't know how many other people the person you're speaking with is having relationships with on Zoom. It might not just be you, right? So it's like anything. It takes a while to get to know somebody. So just like it takes a while to get to know somebody when you live right near them, you know better than not. Maybe if you're not seeing them as much, that gives you a a kind of sign that, okay, maybe they're not that much into me, that this is more this type of relationship but you don't know that when you're doing long distance zoom or facetime right right so you really have to decide how do you build trust Mm -hmm. between someone you can be honest right up front look i'm looking for a law online relationship i can't seem to find find anybody local especially with the pandemic and you need to know what the what the other person wants but are you ever going to get the real answer i don't know that's why you have to really be in tune with your bullshit meter You have to really kind of know yourself and you're knowing that because every single one of us knows when someone's bullshitting or when it doesn't feel right. It's when we ignore our knowing of our flags that we get into trouble. And that's the biggest thing that I can say about online dating and in life in general is, you know, your bullshit meter. And if you're starting to question, then then, you know, step into it and embrace your knowing on that. Right. Right. Well, and, and if you are 
looking for a real relationship. I mean, and by real, I mean, you know, a, a pers- an in-person relationship. How, what are you willing to do for that? How, how far are you willing to travel? Are you willing to relocate? You know, if if you find find the right person, of course. And and what you said uh, earlier too about the red flags, uh, if it's just that this you know this kind of a relationship, that is a huge red flag. I mean, I I think you have to meet at least be willing to, or have the other person be willing to be on Zoom, be video to where you're actually talking to somebody. See them. Yeah. To yes. know that they're able. You have to see somebody. You have to see somebody, not just having. A talk with them right I, and I would be really interested in hearing uh, from people so if, if you are in the situation if you're starting uh, or considering starting a, a long-distance relationship what uh, you know some of the experiences that you've had we, we, we'd love to hear that I think this is fascinating because it literally does open up the world for you to meet someone if you have the right intentions and and I yes. think that's that that's the yes. key. And, you know, you won't know, let's say you get online and you really start to connect with someone and it's working really, really well. Things will eventually lift with the pandemic. You'll feel comfortable flying and then you'll really get to see because it's really easy when you're long distance to say, yeah, I can't wait to get on a plane and see you. Yeah, let's meet halfway there. Hey, how about we go on a vacation as soon as we can? And then when the time comes and you're ready to do it and there's backtracking, backtracking, backtracking. You've just learned something about that person. Because remember this too, right now we don't have as much access to people as we normally do, right? So you're going online a lot more. So online always it's easier to bullshit, it's easier just to kind of you know, talk to somebody, it's easier to be avoidant, it's easier to not be who you really are. So you're on a screen for maybe a couple hours or if you're really hitting off with someone, like some of my clients have gone through this in the past couple months, where they've been on screen for like five hours at a time because it's like they've been they've both been craving it and they're really starting to learn some something about someone. So when you get to spend that much time with someone, it's really, really good. Um, and then they get into the deeper stuff and then they hear the deeper stuff. And sometimes what happens is when someone shares the deeper stuff or you share the deeper stuff, maybe you're not going online as much. That's a red flag too, right? Because that person heard something deep about you that they don't want to deal with right now, or vice versa. That's another kind of flag too, right? Yeah, that that that's interesting uh, that you brought that up. One one of the um, uh, things I'm hearing from some of our experts, our dating coaches, is that uh, this whole situation with COVID has really forced. Uh, people to slow down because they can't get out and meet. So they are forced to do, you know, Zoom or texting or emailing mm-hmm. to where it's a much slower process and that that's a good thing. Yes. And for the, I think for the most part it is unless it enables somebody who doesn't have good intentions to just, you know, string you along. And you're going to find that in life anyways, whether you're online right. or mm-hmm. not. But let me just say something that you just brought up. So the whole thing about if you start to Zoom and you're trying to get in a relationship, don't start the sexual pictures and showing your whole body right away because you know what? That's what it's going to be about. It's just going to be about the nudity, the this and that, the getting off on each other. If that's what you're there for and you find someone and that's clear for both of you, okay, it works, right? But if it's like anything, if you jump in too quickly, you're not going to really know and, and get to really know somebody. So as much as you can go out before the pandemic and just hop into bed and have sex, it's the same thing, online sex. It just looks a little different. Yes. So decide where you stand on that. <laughs> oh, the world. Enough, it's part of the whole dating scene. No, absolutely. And, and, and how the world has changed. Do you, what, what, what is your opinion? Can you establish charisma and actually fall in love with somebody via Zoom? I think you can. I think anything is possible. I really, really do. The big thing is know yourself. Know the reasons why you want to do this. Be honest. Because at some point you will find someone who's just as honest. Um, But if you really, really want to find somebody, just be who you are. It's the same thing if you go out dating You're going to have good things that work. You're going to have crappy things that work. You're going to meet bullshitters. It's the same thing. It's just you just don't know how many people they're Zooming. Just like if you met somebody, maybe they could be dating other people. Um, 
it's there's a lot of the same things that go on. It's just a little bit trickier because you don't get to like be there and have that tactile of of touching them or, or being there face to face as much. You're face to face this way, but there's just something so different when you're there's an energy of somebody when when you're with them face to face. Um, so is it possible? Anything's possible in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I think it's a good thing. I think it's great. I think it can be exciting. It can open up a whole new world for you. Literally a whole new world to learn right. about cultures and, and yes, literally a whole new world. Right. So it really is is about being smart. Don't be stupid. You know, have that, at least have the, the know that you're talking to a real person, that you're not being catfished, which is a, a, a big, big deal. And I like another thing you said is that, you know, the online is really, it, it is just as in the real world. You have your assholes and you have your good people. You're going to meet them <laughs> everywhere. You have the opportunity to meet more of them <laughs> online perhaps or be exposed more to people that 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 aren't uh you know up up, up and up uh, that happens in real life too so i always i always negate that as well you know online is a terrific way to meet people and and i yeah again i would love to hear how it you know how you may have started a long distance relationship if you are in one let us know because i think this des a topic deserves more attention because it can open up a whole new world as we've already said uh that of hope also of finding love again finding that soul and connection because that's something that we've been craving and haven't been able to do exactly Paige thank you um, I think you've uh, is there anything else that you wanted to say I think you've already uh, summed now, it up a couple <laughs> I was thinking in my mind that that's the way my husband and I met we were long distance for a year until someone had to make the decision of moving oh, so if you are yeah so if you're doing long distance and it's zoom like this um, and it starts to work and it's really, really good and you love it, maybe at some point you'll have to make a decision about who's going to take that leap of faith first. I never knew that about you and Tim. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love it. I love it. Yes. Well, thank you, uh, Paige. And we'll see you next time on Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Bye. <laughs> If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here. Just click on through to YouTube, and when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too. We'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.